Sometimes I paint in sub-assemblies. Sometimes I paint on sprue. Other times I paint fully assembled models. But which should you do? How you doing guys? Big Mac Dancecore here again today, back once again with another episode of Warhammer 40k. And in today's video I'm going to be talking about painting. Painting on sprue versus painting in sub-assemblies versus painting a fully assembled model. So, which is best? There's a technique for all occasions, that's what I'll say. Sometimes I think it is better to paint on sprue or to paint certain, to use certain techniques when the model is still attached to the sprue. This is a piece of terrain. It's a nice big model uh, with lots of flat-ish areas. Obviously they're curved areas, but they're, they're relatively flat and they're all quite similar. Um, they are in fact four pieces of a cylinder. So you put them all next to each other and then it makes up a cylinder. So why have I painted this on sprue? I painted this on sprue to save time really. With it being a piece of terrain, often you don't need to, you don't really want to put as much detail on your terrain as you do on your miniatures because your miniatures should be the star of the show. When, you, when you're when wargaming, your miniatures should be what really pops off the battlefield. Piece of terrain, what you really want to do in my opinion is a rough and ready paint job. So painting a piece of terrain on sprue is ideal really. All of these areas are very similar and they're all going to be equally on display. So just depending on what angle you're looking at the table from, you're going to be able to see each area. This sprue as well, handily, is pre-dyed. So this is a pre-dyed brown sprue. It's from the Kill Team, one of the Kill Team expansions. And the reason I painted it on sprue is because with that brown colour underneath, even once I clip these connection areas off, so there's various connection areas, there'll be a little bit of brown that you can see coming through this yellow but that can act quite nicely as battle damage and even if I want to cover it up a bit, I can do just with another bit of the Avalon Sunset paint or with uh, another paint to make it look like battle damage so I could come in with a metallic paint for example and make it look like the paint has chipped off and just go on the bit of bare plastic I've discovered since starting Warhammer 40,000 Conquest magazine that it's not actually that hard to paint onto bare plastic the good thing about painting onto bare plastic on a bit of terrain is as well, especially if it's on the sides, um, you're not going to put a model on that, so you're not likely to chip that bit of metallic paint off that you, that you put on there to make a bit of battle, battle damage to cover up the bare plastic. But equally, like I said, with this plastic being brown, all I have to do really is put a matte varnish over the top of it and it'll bring the bring the reflection that you see on the plastic here, it'll bring it back a bit, bring it back down, and then that'll give you just like a, a bit of brown battle damage rather than a bit of metallic. Next I'm going to talk about sub-assemblies. So painting the sub-assemblies. If you don't know what a sub-assembly is, it's basically when you build the model in various sections and some reasons you might do it is because you want to base coat one area with a metallic paint let's say and another area with just a flat grey primer and then um, go over it with uh, whatever other paint you want to put on it. So because you're using different undercoats and different base coats it's easy if you've got a rattle can, uh, a spray can, just to just to spray them in different sections. So for this Imperial Knight Castigator I have undercoated all of the framework, so the legs and the torso and also the arms, I've undercoated them in the metallic paint because all this typically the skeleton of Imperial Knights are metallic and then the shell of the Imperial Knights, the carapace, so all the armour, um, is often seen in colours of the house. Um, so depending on what house you are trying to paint your Imperial Knight in, You'll um you might want to spray that in the colour that represent one of the colours that represents your Imperial Knight household. So my Imperial Knight household is House Chromos, and that's a a house of my own making. And the one of the main colours for them is grey. And then I've gone in with this Tamiya red. Um, underneath the Tamiya red is a metallic there as well. But I'm not going to go into too much detail about the paint job. 
the reason basically I would have wanted to paint that in sub assemblies is like I've said because you can use techniques to save time if you're gonna have a metallic base color or even a different base color on two various parts of the model that can be built separately and then you eventually glue them together then you can always do that just be wary though be wary that um, certain models if you build them in sub assemblies that you think might be able to go together at a later date or at a, at a later hour um, make sure you dry fit it all first for an example the Marathi model from the Daughters of Cain that uh, a lot of people built that in sub assemblies um, keeping the base separate from the actual body of the model the miniature unfortunately the, when they came to build it afterwards it was impossible to or very difficult at the very least to, to wrap the torso and the tail of Marathi, the sort of dragon dragon serpentine body around the pillar that she's um, connected to the base with so just make sure um, you do test it out with dry fits use a bit of um, blue tack um, to assemble the model into the sub assemblies you want then make sure you can actually connect the model up afterwards another reason you might want to paint in sub assemblies is to get to certain areas of a miniature so certain miniatures um, come with for argument's sake a gun across the chest. Space Marine miniatures always hold the gun, or almost always, hold the gun across the chest. Just your standard Space Marine troops and your Primaris Marines and that. They always hold the gun across the chest. But a lot of them have this beautiful Imperial Aquila behind that gun. So if you assemble the miniature fully, they've got a big an arm and a gun going across the chest, so you can't really get to that Aquila very easily. So if you want to paint your miniature to a high standard, and they're holding a gun across the chest or something else coming across the torso whether it's an arm wrapped round or a cloak or something where there's a little bit of detail underneath that you really want to pay some attention to because you think it's a great detail and you want to pick it out just make sure you think about possibly building that miniature in sub-assemblies um, what you can do with Space Marine arms often they'll come an arm attached to the gun and then another arm so you can put the one arm on uh, the one that sort of steadies the gun when they're aiming, but the arm that's attached to the gun, you if you can pin that, or you can either leave it on, leave it on a bit of sprue, leave it attached to the sprue, paint it on there, or you can pin that and just put it in a bit of cork or uh, some kind of a model holder, um, or just uh, blue tack it to a paint pot, something like that. So you can paint that arm separately, and then you can get to that torso aquila. So if there's going to be any areas that are difficult to get to. Um, another example might be cloaks and stuff like that. So the back of legs are often covered by cloaks, but you're not necessarily going to see that when it's assembled. But if you really want to make sure you can get your brush in there with ease all around the legs, because there will be areas that you will see that will make that the cloak would make it difficult to get to. Um, you you may want to consider just building a model with a cloak as well in sub assemblies. What models are good to paint fully assembled? This one. This one's alright to paint fully assembled, I'd suggest, because it's got quite an open pose. There are certain areas that are a bit difficult to get to, like under his arm, um, and under under the model itself. Some people paint the models separate from the base, so what they do, they drill holes in the feet and mount them on a paper clip and then attach the paper clip again to a, a bit of cork, um, just so they can more easily get underneath the model than having the big base on there. Uh, but this model's got a relatively open pose and you can get to all areas of the model. Um, another model that you might want to paint fully assembled is a Space Marine Rhino or a, a lot of Space Marine tanks are quite easy to paint fully assembled because they're quite blocky shapes. So there are, there's no real hidden areas within them other than, of course, the interior. If you don't glue your door shut, you may want to paint the interior, so consider that before you um, assemble the model perhaps. I've got a couple more examples of models with open poses here that um, I'm painting fully assembled. So here's a Reva Sergeant and an Intercessor Sergeant. An Intercessor Sergeant. Um, yeah, so they've both got really open poses. They've got nothing across the chest. The Intercessor Sergeant's gun is down by his side. It blocks the helmet off a little bit, but 
to no great degree really. I can easily get in there and paint that helmet red if I wanted to, to mark him out as a sergeant. There's no cloaks or anything on him, so I can get to all areas of that miniature really. And the same goes for the Reaver Sergeant. There's very few areas that I'd struggle to get to there. I can even, even get through his legs to the scabbard where his knife was previously stored. And just as a point of reference, this is an example of a Space Marine with a gun across his chest. So I may have painted this separately um, if I'd thought ahead. But because it's a, a troop, when, you, when, when something's a, a relatively cheap model, you're likely to have a lot of it on the battlefield. So even a Space Marine with a gun across his chest, I may not be that bothered. I may just want to get them all built. Let's say I've got 10 in a squad and I've got three squads, so I've got 30 Space Marines to build and paint. Even if they've all got the gun across the chest, I may still put that gun across the chest and then paint them afterwards. Because it doesn't really matter. In, in a massed infantry situation, you're just going to look at them from a few feet away. You're not going to get up close to each of those miniatures and want to have a look. They're, they're going to look good from one, two, three feet away. Um, from typically the distance your eyes are from the tabletop. So you may even want to paint those models that block off the chest fully assembled um, because on mass they look great. But it's the characters that you may want to pay a little extra attention to. Typically characters have more open poses anyway, which is, is quite good for us. But they often have things like cloaks which block off certain areas of the model. So make sure you bear that in mind before you fully assemble all your miniatures and just crack on with the painting of them. Because it could be a useful thing to just stop and think for a minute. Think, do I need to fully assemble him or should I leave the cloak off? Should I leave the gun off? Various other things as I've mentioned in this video already. I'll leave it there for now guys. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the battlefield.